Okay, this is the uh, January 21st meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. We're being videotaped tonight by Frontier Community Access Television uh, for viewing by our residents and the public later on. First item on our agenda tonight is the minutes for the January 13th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah. Uh, any changes or additions to the minutes? You sent out a draft, Tom. Are those still? Yeah. 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 Just this afternoon, and yeah. I apologize. No, no, for it's fine. If people didn't yeah. have time to review it, I read that one. So. Good. Okay. We all set with the minutes then. Yeah. I will make a motion that we approve the minutes for the January 13th meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $157,282, a payroll warrant for $110,070, and a payroll deduction warrant of $27,470. Does everybody uh, have a chance to review those warrants? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Meetings attended by select board members. Okay. Phil, what do you got? Uh, well, I went to our planning board meeting on Thursday. Um, attendance was much lower this time around, but uh, it was still still an interesting um, um, meeting. That they did they did uh, talk about in their meeting. They talked about their own uh, submission of the technical assistance. They, they had a recommendation for technical assistance. Um, I forget, for, for, for the technical assistance prioritization, the thing that's on the agenda next in old business. Um, and I forgot exactly what it was that they said, but their reasoning was excellent. And I remember thinking at the time, I agree with that, that's what I want too. But I forgot what it was they said. So, sorry. Okay. So, so we had an FCAT meeting on on Thursday, it was our annual meeting, and I'm, I guess, honored to report I'm once again elected president of the board. So I could not, I could not find somebody else to do it. So my condolences. You know, fortunately, Chris does 99% of the work, and, uh, and and I sign checks and and things like that. So it's fine. Um, the only other thing, there was a Conservation Commission meeting this week, and the reason that that's important is that last week I mentioned that the Conservation Commission had a site visit to the Roaring Glen marijuana farm, and there were some things that might be under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Uh, Roaring Glen needs to fill out an RDA, and they have, they didn't fill it out. I, we thought that they might show up at the Conservation Commission with the RDA, um, and they, they weren't there. So, you, you know, we're sort of waiting on on them to come in and chat with us. Okay. <coughs> Great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I also attended the um, Frontier Community Access Television uh, meeting last Thursday, and uh, wanted to make sure that uh, we had a good present for the year uh, coming up. You didn't jump right in, John. <laughs> uh, uh, I thought it was a very good meeting. Yeah. I think Chris handled it very well, and, and I think the board was very happy with the results of last year and the plans for the new year. And it was nice to see that um, uh, the Kevin Murphy got an award, and so did John um, Basham. You know, he received a couple of nominations for awards on work that he's done, so that was that was really good. And as Chris said, apparently um, FCAT is seen as a model uh, for other local uh, access television stations in the area. So that's that's really great. It made there are a bunch of good things that make that happen. You know that that I would like to give the board credit, but you know the existence of Kevin having the connection to Frontier, mm -hmm. having kids be interested from Frontier is really key. Uh, Chris seems able to hire really good good people. Thank you very much, Dan. Dan um, was mentioned as yeah, one of the yeah. uh, one of the outstanding people at FCAN. 
Yeah. And the only other good news that came out of that meeting, I thought you might mention it, but that, that it's looking like the FCC changes might not be so harmful to uh, local, uh, uh, lo local access television stations and, uh, and that Ed Markey is submitting a bill you know, at the federal level to, that will improve that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. all of that's positive. It, it makes Chris feel a lot more confident that we will continue to have enough funding to let FCAP survive. Right, yeah, I, 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 I can't at all see this, but you know, that situation would go through and, and virtually wipe out, you know, local local access television. I can't see that happening. So. Yeah. All right. It already has. It's just a lawsuit so far from a few states that's keeping it open. That 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 regulation's been passed. It's been official. It is. It is. It. You know, as soon as and as soon as it gets the super whatever, the, 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 they're on borrowed time. It's it's happened. So, it has happened. It is happening. So we can support Ed Martin. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other public comments? No. Okay. Old business. First item on old business is our direct local technical assistance prioritization. Oh, does Jan have a public comment? No. No? You're here for uh, direct, for local, technical direct local technical assistance? Direct local technical assistance prioritization. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go for it, Jan. Uh, well, we found out recently that the town's open space and recreation plan has to be updated. I think the last one was that they go for seven years. And it's a pretty hefty, thorough mm -hmm. report um, that we hire someone to do, a firm to do. Uh, FERCOG did it last time. And, and they've done a very good job. You know, they have a lot of the information. But it costs about $20,000. Mm -hmm. cool. And... It costs uh, about what? About $20,000. It, it can cost that to do this. Uh, and um, so I asked, when I spoke with Kimberly about it, you know, that's a lot of money, and, you know, you got to do but uh, I, I talked to Tom, and uh, requesting the DLTA money is appropriate. Yeah, so. on the next to the last page, there's uh, under zoning and policies and plans, the second one down <laughs> is the open space and recreation plan update. So you'll see I included that in our compilation, um, but I wanted uh, Janet to have a chance. It, it's, uh, it's an important piece of the town's grant capability function and uh, I, and I just wanted uh, Janet to uh, come in and, and advocate for it being one of the one of the top priorities we'll have to pick three um, for our top priorities and uh, getting money for this expensive process is um, I think uh, important and I wanted Janet to it, it, it is important and I know that. from other projects I've been involved with for other grant funding, competitive grants, it's one of the um, <coughs> factors on where you rate. Does the town have a good updated open space plan? Um, and so that is important and you know we know it's a tight budget year also. Um, if it doesn't look like we're going to get this or be prioritized that I might have to we might have to put in some some operating budget request uh, perhaps not for all of it because we have a little money set aside but uh, uh, anyway there it is and I we all know it's important and, and how many do we like to get yes, for these? on one uh, well, that depends if the fur card gets its grant and how much it gets and what other people's priorities are. So they also have a prioritization process to go through once we put ours in. And, and I will say, I mistakenly checked, update continues from previous year instead of new update. We have a plan that's continued, but we have not yet started work on an update. And I believe it's actually due in 2020. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it may be. So this is a new update. New update. It is 2020. Right, yeah. right. It's due. Yes. 
Uh, Kimberly said they, they bill quarterly. I said, you know, when will we know or how is the payment and the working? You know, so, I mean, can we go ahead with you and then kind of reinvest? Well, we get, she didn't know. You know, I mean, I, th I think what you do is you sit when we're actually working on it. If if our if ours is technically expired, then they they tell them that this is the update is in the process. So um, this is a seven year plan. It's kind of an odd timing, but the idea is to get all of Conway's open space concerns into one document, so that then when we apply for grants, we can say that yes, this has been identified as a priority through this open space planning process. And it's recreation too, so we will yes, have have the committee. Uh, has outreach and they hold meetings, um, and hopefully we'll have active recreation. Does that does that qualify for CPA funding? Uh, plan no. Yeah. No. It's. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, that would be. Um, paying, That's a good question. Paying a state mandate from another. No, that that's CPA. That's well, it's partly state money. Uh, well, there, there might be, that might be the, the hang You know, it's for, well, we can take a look, if anybody it's else For open space and recreation. Yeah, it, we can see if anybody else has done it. They've done a lot of, they've done a lot of plan, other towns have just spent planning money, you know. They've, they've, been, they've been loosening up the reins on what you can use uh -huh. CPA money for. Uh -huh. We might want to check that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Because we've, we've got... A whole lot of money in CP. Right. Well, we're hoping to get, you know, that that MVP, uh, mm -hmm. a big, I'm still hoping, and I hope if, you know, it's not happening, somebody's going to tell me, because... Uh, yes, I actually have news on that, oh. um, which is um, not great, uh, but it's not terrible either. Uh, I'm going to go into it in detail in my, in my update, but um, the matching funds we were planning for did not come through, but I'm working with Kimberly on potential alternate sources of matching funds. And we will have some for that. Um, but it's um, it's not going to be as, as much as we thought it was going to be. Uh, if, just keep in mind, I would, just off the top of my head, I, I would think another, a second substantial river restoration, anti-flooding project, like the last one cost $300,000 about, and, you know, depends on what we do, but there's, as we know, there's lots of structural activities, and you know, depending on what we can get for a grant, there's two or three hundred thousand or more. You know, if you want yeah. to do a couple and not wait for subsequent floods, you know. <laughs> uh, so there's that for CPA money. Just keep that in mind. Um, well, depending on your other priorities, um, I, I think this open space plan could be funded from a, from a couple of sources. Um, we, well, yeah, we have to check on the on the CPA possibly. I, I'm gonna take a look and see what if other towns have have had their plans so funded. That that's the best indicator. So I, I you know I I can put in a um, a preliminary. I, I can file a preliminary you know, set of priorities, and then find out pretty quickly uh, if we can use CPA for the, for the plan grant match. Okay. Great. Alrighty. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is to appoint the town hall and so, so we're not going to make a decision on our priorities? Well, we're going to do that. We're going to do that okay. later on. You want to do that? We're going to do that later on, right? Or do you want to do it now? Um, I think now is the, I mean, this is... Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Now we want to... All right, well, I'm participate, so. so... So, when you did the compilation, Tom, what, uh, what came out on top here? Um... Well, I, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's not that a lot came out on top. There was a lot of interest. Um, there was substantial interest in both the, um, the, the housing item, though there were two different ones. The planning board uh, sent in that they wanted us to participate in the small town housing working group with Mary McClintock as the, uh, as the point person. 
and under uh, town hall functions, uh, the explore feasibility or continue work to establish new shared services. Uh, that, that came in pretty high as well. Um, and then there were uh, a couple of zoning bylaw and city ordinance, uh, uh, well, zoning bylaw development ones. Um, well, well, one of them was uh, short-term residential rentals, but we already have a bylaw on that. Um, so I'm not sure if that, um, if, if we need to change that or uh, what the thinking was behind that. Um, and and there's always there's always more river cord, corridor management to do. We do have the plans, um, and one of the things, as Janet was just saying, is we can um, we can tack that on to the the open space and recreation plan update because a lot of what we're doing is focusing on the South River, and that's really where we want to do the river board <laughs> management, so all of that, all of that comes together. Um, so the town hall functions, the um, housing, interestingly, also <clears throat> another thing under housing was to create a housing production plan, a five-year plan that identifies the housing needs of the community and outlines the strategies a town can take toward meeting those needs. So that's, um, now that we no longer have a housing committee, it might be good to, uh, to be able to get some funds for that. Um, other things that were mentioned, um, under the first category, climate resiliency, we have culvert assessments. assessments. Uh, on my list, I had culvert assessments. Um, okay, I did we, too. Did we just, we, so it feels like something we have not now, done much of. Now, and, and I will say we have, um, there is a, a state list, and they've gone over all of our culverts and ranked them. So that, that's one reason why I, 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 would, um, I would say that that isn't necessarily mm -hmm. uh, as high a priority because they're all listed and ranked, and we do have some high priority culverts already identified. Uh, we just have to get the money to fix them, which has always been Ron's issue. Yeah. We do all this planning, and then we don't have the money to actually, it can cost two, three hundred thousand dollars to replace an existing culvert with the new stream crossing, you know, open bottom culvert. So um, they, they can be planned for all you like, but with that kind of price tag, you know, we can't. It would be difficult to do one, let alone two. So, and we already know what the highest priority culverts are. So, uh, that was that. Also, uh, managing flood risks regionally, uh, which is implementing the recommendations uh, in the report mentioned here, and uh, um, that could involve uh, planning uh, bylaws. Uh, very tough to pass because they involve limiting people's property rights and the ability to build in the floodplain and things like that. Uh, but not necessarily a bad idea because if anybody's um, house is in the floodplain, if there's a flood, the river can get contaminated as well as the people's property being destroyed. So there's a public interest in that as well. Um, under transportation, there was EV charging station implementation assistance. Um, uh, my only uh, comment on that is we did look at the funding that was available because they're also looking for applying for incentives and we found that the, the funding for municipalities was substantially less um, basically all the money in that program was used up uh, so we might be able to find out something more I think we've done our own citing we know the, the two top places we'd like it um, but again, the, the incentives seem to have dried up. Maybe they know more about it. Um, and then purchasing and, and installing them. Uh, the, the, the incentives were for the purchase and installation. Uh, there, the, that does mean that the town then assumes ownership and the need to maintain them. So that's uh, something that some people have some, some wariness about. Uh, under training and workshops, the local official continuing education workshops, um, those, those have been um, really pretty good uh, over many years. And so that's good. And, um, fostering municipal engagement and, and involvement. 
Um, of course, I think the- uh, You wrote that down. <laughs> yeah, well, the Town Academy is part of that. Um, and I am working on some succession planning with the uh, personnel committee, but it's very difficult in a small town. Uh, uh, people tend to hang on to their jobs, and therefore um, mobility within a department is sometimes quite limited over someone's career. Um, participation in career fairs and expos, that's, that's uh, great if we had jobs that we needed to advertise. We have, um, very few openings, and usually have very few openings over the course of the year. Um, and there's the Open Space and Recreation Plan update. Uh, the Rural Policy Plan implementation, I think, is is very important because that was a that was a project that was led by Linda Dunlavey at the mm -hmm. FERCOG, and she had um, she had. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of good ideas for trying to grab, you know, trying to grapple with the uh, with the problems of rural communities. So the more that that can happen, and well, one of their major items was advocating for an office of rural policy, which many states have, and Massachusetts does not. Someone to actually uh, be the conduit for rural town. But we have that in place now. No, no, I don't think. No, that was just a recommendation from the. I see this last report, so unless it's in Governor Baker's new budget, um, uh, we do not have it in place. And we won't know what that is until tomorrow. So, uh, uh, he's, he's supposed to um, release his budget tomorrow. Uh, so that's, those are, those are the, the things that I got. Bob, if you want to make any comments on your own. I like, you know, the culvert assessments, but if you say that you think the state has already provided that, you know, and and, uh, and the open space and EV charging, it's it's very difficult to pick three. It is. It's very difficult. To pick three. Um, I like the small town housing working group. I do too. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it comes from planning. I like that. Um, I like the open space, obviously the update to the plan. Um, and, you know, you've got uh, explore feasibility and continue work to establish new shared services. That's good. But then you have local official continuing education workshops. That's outstanding. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the rural policy plan implementation. That's outstanding, too. So, so that's five. Why don't we give them five? Yeah, we'll give them five. Why don't we give them five? Okay. Because right. okay. trying to give them three is, is, out of all these choices is a little crazy. Okay. So we've got the planning commission, uh, our planning board uh, covered. We've got Janet's concerns covered. And uh, we want to throw uh, EV charging in there too. Last maybe, but sure. What's EV? Well, when we, EV. Get, we, we get to send them multiple multiple uh, items, it's just that we're supposed to identify in the, order. the top three. Yeah. Um, I think they, they do a kind of a ranked choice voting, you know, and they see, well, you know, everybody included this one, but nobody had it at the top. Mm -hmm. We should still do it, so. Yeah. Okay, so do you have enough information from us to Phil? Do you have? Yeah, and I'll I'll uh, I'll make uh, Janet the contact, the town. Con they asked for a town contact for the project, so I'll put you as the town contact for the OSRP update. Phil, do you have any recommendations? I, I shared you with you your uh, your desire for the smoke for the housing. Uh, okay. Uh, stuff. The only thing that I would have not picked was the um, supporting the communities that care for Cog substance abuse prevention thing because um, I'm just hearing from the educators that do this that it would be so much better if we could fund actual therapists and counselors instead of FERCOG employees to come up with plans um, uh, that don't go oh, anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, but, but I'm sorry I didn't mention that as, uh, when, I, when I was going through what I received. <clears throat> um, 
The question really from the, from the town is who would be on the regional opioid task force? Um, and I, I know our, uh, our, uh, our Board of Health isn't interested in uh, shared public health functions at this point. You can, you can do it all. <laughs> yes. You're the Thank super you. board. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so you have enough information to put it together? I do. Thank okay. you. Any other contributions, guys? No. No? Thank okay. you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is to appoint the Town and Office Renovation Committee, uh, Patricia Lynch, who is um, chair of the uh, Council on Aging, myself, Ron Sweet, uh, Janice Warner, and uh, Lee Whitcomb. Okay. Uh, Tom was also looking for someone from the Capital Improvement Committee. And we that's true. We have a meeting tomorrow. So. Well, yeah. So that's why you're not on this list. So. It, we'll we'll give you a name tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So we have we have five on there now. Yeah. And you're going to give us another name tomorrow. Yeah. We'll, We'll recommend or we'll approve at the next at the next meeting. Okay. Um, well, you can approve these if you want, or whatever, whatever you want. To yeah, that, that's my plan. Is yeah. To uh, yeah. to make a motion to approve these five to the uh, town hall and office renovation committee Great. for a term ending um, in on June 30th of 2021. All right. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? So this is the, for the town for the committee. Yes. For a term that ends when? June 30th, 2021. A year. That, that was important to put an end date on it? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we, we'll, we, you know, we'll reappoint. As, as, a, as an ad hoc committee, this, their appointments will be for one year, uh, as opposed to making it a standing committee, like mm -hmm. the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board or something like that. Well, the Planning Board's elected anyway. But that's... Uh, how Conway does it. That's the bylaws. So it's not meant to be a permanent committee for the town. It's meant to be the renovation committee. Okay. We all set that? All right. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. I wish that committee the best of luck, but I just want to be clear. If there's no price estimates and dollar estimates that come out of the committee's work product, I will not be supporting the committee's work product. All right. Okay, Phil. Thank you for your input. All right. Next item uh, on the agenda is to appoint the cemetery uh, commissioners, Peter Friesem and uh, Stephen Jackson. And uh, I'm going to ask for that to be tabled. Um, Peter is uh, on the verge of getting a third member and just wanted to get um, all three of them together to come in uh, before being appointed. All right, so we'll table that, and, and hopefully by next meeting, uh, Peter will have his uh, uh, third member. He might not just because um, he's asked. I know. I know. I saw in the historical society minutes he's asked the historical society to nominate a member to it or whatever, and they don't have a board meeting till January thirty first or something. So. It might be a couple weeks after that. Okay. Maybe, maybe bump it a couple of, right. a couple right. of things. It, it's not, you know, it's not uh, an urgent matter, I don't think. All right. Next item is to appoint Robert uh, Nowick as the Conservation Commission representative to the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, he was he was recommended. Uh, he was actually nominated by the Conservation Commission. The bylaw for appointing uh, community preservation committee members is very poorly written, uh, but it does seem clear that the uh, that some groups uh, nominate people and forward that nomination to the select board, and then the select board makes the appointment. So that I think is clear enough to uh, to go on. But at some point, that bylaw is, that uh, town meeting vote is going to need. So I know we've talked about it with the Conservation Commission. Bob, you know, he's on board with it. Uh, I, I thought I'd, I'd see him here. But. Okay, I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, Robert Nowick 
um, to the um, Conservation Preservation Committee uh, appointed to serve on the Conservation Commission representative to the Community Preservation Committee for term ending June 30th, 2022. I have a second? Yes. yes. All in favor? Yes. Impressive navigation of a true tongue twister. Yeah. Okay. Perfect timing. Okay, and here we are, 6.30. Perfect timing for our finance. Gentlemen, welcome. You get a different combination every week. I have to mix it up and make all the excitement yeah. now. We'll keep you guessing. and we actually have shown the budgets, you know, all the way across. Uh, we do a, an incredibly good job of tracking every red cent that we spend. And so if things turn out to be flat, so to speak, or within a you know, few hundred dollars, uh, the numbers usually stay the same. <coughs> the, um, the thing that really got us between the eyes was the, um, the recycling, um, recycling disposal. Mm -hmm. Which is going to be another twenty thousand dollars, right? And um, we also have a little bump in our um, 
electric usage at a transfer station. So it looks like the new machine uses a little more juice than the, the uh, old one did, the new uh, compactor. Actually, it, it probably does because it's, it's, it keeps the uh, hydraulic fluid warm. Mm -hmm. So it uses some energy doing that. It's much like the, the paper compactor does the same thing. So, you know, everything's pretty flat here, um, except for things like Port of Health dues, which we, we know went up, so that, that went up by $1,200. Um, well, one of the things we were missing was the uh, nursing program. We didn't have a uh, number on that. Okay, so that's why it went up from, from 10000 to 13000 yeah, they, they, if you look at that across the line, it goes up. Uh, it goes up every year, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all determined by for Cog's got some sort of formula formula they use, right? Yeah, <coughs> per you know per capita. And we also uh, threw in some uh, a little bit of money to pay for the transportation of the composting. Um, but anything that's over the little bit that we put in there will come out of RDP funds, or can come out of RDP funds. Hmm. Okay. How, how's the composting coming? It's doing good. It's doing good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we're, we were having a little issue with bear-proof covers right at the moment. <laughs> that was... When I saw with the, those covers that they put on that right. thing, I'm just like... No. <laughs> no. My dog can break into that. <laughs> that's right. That's a snack for a bear. Snack stop. So uh, hopefully that will be resolved in the next couple of months. Um, Amy Donovan at uh, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District is working on new bear proof covers. Okay. So all, right. so all of that other stuff was about a 4% increase, except for the 20000 yep. Yes. Um, and, and, and that's all, that's new... Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, stuff money. goes stuff goes up. I mean, yeah. You, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't, uh, if, you, if you look across the board, I mean... You know, ten years or um, five or six years ago, things were a lot cheaper. But the twenty thousand is probably there. Oh, and that's, going that's up. a killer. That, yeah, that, and, yeah, yeah, and it's and it's going to be it's going to be escalated every five years, also. Yeah. So, is there any reason why we don't have the expenditures for eighteen and nineteen for your for your department? The uh, expenditures for eighteen, the ones for nineteen, actually should be on there. I apologize for that. The ones on, uh, oh, I think I have it on a revised form, and this just came in um, recently, this weekend. Yeah. Uh, the eight, we don't have 18 expenditures for a number of departments because that was when we were having our uh, accounting software conversion, mm -hmm. and a lot of the numbers didn't match with what our budgetary numbers were uh, when that came out. It was, uh, it was quite a, a chaotic scene there. For that year, and uh, so we're um, some some departments <coughs> went back and filled in their their FY18 figures, um, but not all departments were able to. It, it was just there were there was a and it depended on on uh, which departments got more heavily hit by the by the conversion and the different numbers that were being used. Um, we should all be. Settled in now. Mm -hmm. I've got the numbers if yeah, in the other room if you if you need them. <laughs> but I, I it just it gives like a historical context and you know like I, the the two years before that the expenditures were were well under the budgeted amounts. Yep. Yeah. And um, and that could that gives the person keeping score from the sidelines uh, sort of context for everything. And I, th I think it's mm -hmm. kind of important when. Well, it kind of looks like it was all in uh, trash trucking. You know, the trucking aspect. Trucking, the recycling, the bulk, and the trash. That yeah, looks like where the bump, where the bump is, was from 17 to 18. That varies widely. That varies widely between <coughs> dual holes and single holes. I expect there was a, a new contract that year or something, too. Finance, you guys have any questions? Yeah. Yeah, the big item is for the Board of Health is going to be this new contract. Mm -hmm. And there's very little we can do about it. Um, 
It is being rewritten, but it's not going to change the bottom line. It's just the process of how it gets implemented. And it's coming out to the end of February. Now, yeah. So, so, so right now it's at 228. What's the what's the forecast that it's going to be? It's going to be 228. This is it. That's the that's, that's the best sure. estimate that we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I you know I don't I don't I actually think you run a good department. I know criticism, um, but the the uh, the. I, just as when, when, when you stand up at town meeting, um, you can't say that it's flat because it's a 15% increase. Right. And, um, that, and, 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 and it's not that, like, the, the, I agree with you, that happens. Right. And, um, uh, but the, the, the other side of that is that if every department had that percentage increase well, every year, government would shortly really become unsustainable. Um, but other than the 20,000, it's 4%. 4%. Correct. I know. I know. The number you have control yes. over, really. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we had no control over the 20,000. No, no. That hit us between the eyes. <laughs> and I actually think that the the uh, um, the household waste collection might might knock this number down a little bit. Well, there'll it's, be things there'll be things that'll be yeah, out on the compost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The compost. So, uh, there'll be things happening over the next several years, actually, by the time it's all settled out. It'll slowly bring that that twenty thousand dollar hit down a little bit. Because we'll start getting compensated for stuff that they can recycle. Well, you were talking about glass. Glass. Yeah. yeah. Glass. And yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, what, are, what what do you get for the dues? Eleven thousand bucks in dues. That's the nursing program from, from FERCOG, plus. $150 to belong to the Massachusetts Board of Health Association. Okay. So have the visiting nurse that comes here? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 And she does, she does a lot more than just come here once a month. She, she, she goes, goes to them. people's houses around town. Mm -hmm. okay. so, that, so then what's the other, what's other services? <laughs> I didn't bring the printout for what other <coughs> services entails. It, it, it's a list. Like a pretty long list, so I'm looking going, oh, what else? <laughs> the list of, it's, it's for all those things that don't fit any place else, like um, the paying for the, um, the fire extinguishers at the transfer we'll get, station. We'll get inspected. The porta potty at the transfer station. Mm -hmm. A lot of these items yeah. are little things that don't belong in any of these other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a flu shot part of the visiting nurse, or is that a additional that's part of the visiting nurse that's not part of us the only thing that we've um, we've got the um, vector borne disease testing that's the tick program mm -hmm. right. um, and we've been putting I think what eighteen eighteen hundred dollars into that mm -hmm. I think I've spent that myself and that's with that and that's with us subsidizing yeah and you know, there's other little things we get um, um, a DEP grant every year, a, a, a small amount of money. Part oh, of that will, yeah. yeah, this is that part of that money will go to um, paying for the comp getting the compost out of Conway. Um, part of it is going to go to the um, we get a you know, the, the grocery bags, the aha. Uh -huh. <coughs> The recycle bins, the reusable grocery bags, the kitchen compost pails, and the compost uh, backyard compost bins, and we've been told that we have to subsidize a certain number of those mm -hmm. compost bins in order to get more grant money mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving, we'll give away our three, and then whatever else comes in, I think we have to pay twenty-five dollars. Yeah, you can't charge more than twenty-five. Right, we we'll charge <coughs> twenty-five and, and um, pay the rest mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Are you get compost bins that are bigger than just two gallons? Oh, we need those big this black ones. For the big ones, yeah. yeah for the backyard got, compost. The ones of bears just tear oh. tear apart. Um, yeah, they're not bear proof. No. What it's Earthworks, I think, or something Earthworks, like that. Yeah. It's out of Canada, and it's a nice little compost bin. Mm -hmm. But the bears can really the Earth okay. Machine. Yeah. What the Earth Machine? Yeah, Earth Machine. Yeah, this yeah. one I say looks like a Darth Vader helmet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? 
Okay, Carl, Ginny, Vernie, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Okay. Essentially level funded. Pretty close. Um, only a couple min minor increases and in some. Um, About a one percent increase. Yeah, some dues meetings uh, went up just a tad. Um, I have a new line in there called treasure fees, and this is just for um, some very occasional fees that come up if there were to be a bank charge or something for some reason. Um, okay. Previously, it, it's rarely come up, but we don't have anything to charge it to if it does, so just put it on the amount in there. Pretty simple. If anybody had any questions, I understand. So if your support went up a bit? Yes, so yes. I'd like to talk to you about that, actually, because um, I'm proposing an article this year for um, a conversion of our payroll software. We've been with this company since uh, around 2007, and they are going through a number of changes and have been for a few years now. And um, feel, I feel that they're going to be phased out at some point. And the company is called SoftRight, and uh, they're, they're not growing, they're shrinking. They're shrinking into the arms of a very big company. And um, they're, they've proposed some upgrades that um, I'm not really thinking are going to be for the best interest of the town. So I've been looking elsewhere for quite some time because, as you recall, we did a, a tax collection software update last year. Yeah. So um, switching to uh, a new company, the one I've chosen is, is called Zobrio, and it's the company that we uh, have our cash management software with and also our accounting software. So they're all linked together, they talk to one another, so it's a, I think it'll be a very nice system when it's all together. Um, their cost is... Do we get a bundle discount? <laughs> I've been actually pushing that through uh, the FERCOC, so that because you know they're providing the software for the towns for accounting, well why not provide it for cash book and payroll as well? Um, the reps have been working on that, but I haven't seen any progress yet. So the bottom line is that um, there, there's three charges that come out of it. It's the licensing. Oh, let me hand this out to you first, sorry. I assume you don't have this analysis I gave to Tom yet about the conversion. It looks no, like no, this. No, no. So the top part of it is software, right, the company we have now and the lower part is Zobrio. So to convert to Zobrio, we have a software license for 
implementation fees um, that I asked them to break out over two, uh, three years just to try and save us some money and not take us such a big hit in the beginning. <coughs> and then the annual support. Now, if you compare the annual support from this company to the other, it's an unbelievable difference. Mm. 871 for Zobrio, over 5,000 for Software. Is it because it's a huge company? Okay. Softrate has just gotten so expensive. Wow. I can't explain why, but there's not very many choices for small towns for you know mm -hmm. software, whether it be tax collector or payroll. I did actually investigate uh, outsourcing to uh, a company that we had before called Harpers, and they came in at a very similar price to Safrate. It's mm -hmm. it's you pay in a little bit of a different way. You pay per check you write and so forth, but. Mm -hmm. Comes out, it came out to be a little bit less, but I find it um, to be too confining. We're stuck. We're stuck to their dates and and so forth. And so I have, and it doesn't talk to our current accounting program. So for that that reason, I picked Zobrio. You know, I'm babbling. So the no, you're not babbling. I think it's great. I I love the care that you take to <laughs> choose the best and the most efficient uh, way way. Well, and and, and 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 the conversion is just something to get through. It's, the continue. Right. The, the conversion you take a little bit of a hit on on yeah. the first year. And then mm -hmm. over three, in, in, by the third year, we're saving money. And mm -hmm. fourth and fifth years, we're saving a ton a, of money. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So during that first year, um, you know, I have a little total that's kind of hard to read below where it says four year total savings. Mm -hmm. So you see soft right at 23,265 and Zobrio at 21,558. Well that's because I had to, on the first year, I have to add in double coverage because a payroll conversion happens in January, not a fiscal year. So I have to pay for a full year of support yeah. with soft right while I'm converting to Zobrio. Right. Yeah. And so need, that's why we don't see more. I don't use very much. I, I, I call them um, once every couple months. And you could probably teach it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I think that's maybe also why the Zobrio support is so low because they're also familiar with us, and I don't, I don't draw on them too much either. Yeah. In fact, I, I probably endorse their products so much that they are thankful that <laughs> they're getting us. Yeah. Because I, I like the company. I think they handle support very well. And, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's an article for the treasurer's side. So uh, it doesn't really affect my budget too much for right. this year. But in future years, you'll see my support <coughs> budget going down. Okay. All right, great. So I just have a question about the, the budget input sheet. There's clearly an arithmetical error in the fiscal 2019 spending column. <laughs> yep. yep. Clearly. Yep. And so I always get a little bit nervous when I see an arithmetical error letter in a budget sheet because. Um, um, yeah. Where's yeah. There? One, we'll take if, a look at that. There's one that you they, spot. What about the ones yeah. that you're not spotting? About a factor of two off. Yeah. Which, which, which one? Yeah. 2019 yeah. expended the, yeah. the bottom the total column. column. Yeah, 55 was added in twice. Oh. Yeah. Up on top. Right, so it's probably totaled at the whole, the whole yeah. line. Yeah. Exactly. So when I received it, I didn't have the expended, so I, I take credit for that one. I, I filled that in. Yeah, you have one more line added in there than you have on the rest of them for the sum. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, any questions? Uh, well, I have Audience. a question, but not about the budget, really. But you, know, you, you now allow people to pay online. Taxes, Tax. yes. And is that, do a lot of people do that? Yes. Is it, I mean, is that good? Is it easy for you? Or? It's very easy for us, especially with our new software company. We download a file, we upload a file, and it's paid. For, you know, you can do hundreds at a time, so when, when all the real estate tax bills are coming in heavy, it's, it makes it pretty easy on Great. us. Great. Yeah. Working very nicely. There's a cost, right? A couple of percent? For to, to paying it online? Yeah. No. Yeah. So no, not to the town at all. So there is the, a, a little bit of a cost either. to the taxpayer. So if you do a direct ACH payment, it's, it's twenty five cents. It's not. Yeah. Well, you can do that. If you pay it? with a credit card, you have to pay yeah. the merchant fee. Right. right. So it's it's. Well, so uh, I, I think it's around five percent or so. Yeah. 
You can just that put was, in your That was a big change just recently, too, wasn't it? Right? Oh, we've always had that, actually. Electronic payments? Yes. Oh, it's a workaround. Well, we've had it for years. Though. There's a workaround. Some of us still write checks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thrilled about the writing. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'd like to hear about the workaround at some point. Maybe not right now, but we might like to. Okay, any any other questions on this account? Well, any other tasks signing up for this over you know? Uh, not, that I, not that I know of. I know Buckland has it, and their treasurer is um, just starting to work with it. Right. But, yeah. Okay. What are you working on? I've been helping her out a little bit. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Janet. Now, how yeah. about the, um, Janice, the next account is debt. Yes. How do we look, how do we look on? So that one's pretty easy. We don't have much debt. Yeah. We have our fire truck loan that we continue to pay down. Yeah. Um, it's split out into two lines. Well, you actually don't have it in this one, but so never mind. I won't go there. Same price, two lines. Um, so there is a little uh, new number in there under short term interest. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the short term interest we always plan for in case we have to take any. Um, bonds, you know, in, in anticipation of revenue, mm -hmm. we also have to plan on our loan for the highway garage. So there's an additional $1,100 in there okay. for, for the financial advisory fees. So that's mm -hmm. it, but that's a pretty small change as well. Yeah, okay. looking good. Any questions on the debt? Okay, now, yeah. employee the big benefits, one. here's the big one. <laughs> here's the big one. Now, I have some work for you. Let's see if I have it. one more. Oh, we got a bunch of them here. Yeah. Yeah, so as you can see, no, it's not in there yet. You guys got it? No, I know it's in it. I know it's coming soon. Do you have you heard what it's going to be? Uh, I have not. So. Just rumors that it's a um, small increase. Okay. But yeah. So I always plan for a 3% increase. We really don't know what the premium increase is going to be. Mm -hmm. But this year, a really big increase is due to the numbers. So um, on the, the legal size page, I did a little analysis for you um, comparing school health to town health. Um, and as you can see, from 2019 to 2020, for the school side, we had a six employee increase. So I always planned for two. This year we had six. The town <coughs> stayed pretty stable. Um, so that's going to put me over my budget this year, and I'm going to be asking for additional funds to pay the health insurance budget this year. It'll be short, somewhere around thirty thousand okay. dollars. So what, the the way I budget for health insurance is I take the January snapshot because that's usually when we have the most employees on. You know, there's there's changeovers for the school and you know over the summer in September. So I take the January snapshot. I add on an individual plan. I add on a family plan, mm -hmm. and that's how I kind of plan for it the best I can. Mm -hmm. So six obviously was a bit of a surprise. The workforce <laughs> numbers stayed the same. We had some people that picked it up that haven't had it before. Oh. That, that's kind of probably contractual. You mean, is that you mean contractual assistance? No, I mean, you can have an employee that once had it through their spouse that uh -huh. now, it, whether their spouse changed jobs or uh -huh. whatever, it becomes more affordable for them to switch over. Uh -huh. I had a couple people that switched over from Mass Health. Uh, once, and you know that's a, that's another thing I had to add into my budget this year. We've now begun um, the employer shared responsibility fees. Uh, so when we have employees that don't make enough money to for us to say that we've offered affordable health care, we get we get a fine essentially um, about three thousand dollars a year per employee per affected employee. So I have to start budgeting for that now. So th th this is what our share of the insurance is, and we're paying how much? Eighty percent? 
Seventy uh, percent. Seventy percent. Yeah. Okay. Of the HMO, sixty percent of the PPO. Okay. How do we compare with our neighboring towns with, in those shares? Uh, we're a little different. It, it varies. Uh, the towns in our union, Phil probably knows the numbers better than I do. Uh, some are as low as 6, 60 60 percent. 60 is the lowest. That's Sunday. And the highest is 85? 80. 80. Deerfield pays 80? No. Uh, Frontier pays 80. Frontier pays 80. Um, and uh, Deerfield Deerfield's 75, like us. Deerfield 70. Yeah, we're, we're 70. Deerfield 70, Waitley 65, Sunderland 60. And we're 70. We're, we're 75. We're not the highest, we're not the we're lowest. We are the highest. We're 70. We're 70. 70. We're, 70. 70. 70. 70. Yeah, yeah. we're tied for the highest. We have any... Uh, well, the lowest you can go is 50. Uh, right. <laughs> we're required the Family Medical Leave Act at all through the Frontier Regional of the schools. The Family Medical Leave Act, Medical Leave Act at FMLA. Yes. Is that a factor in the benefits for the uh, yeah. schools? I know the town has a local exemption from the town employee. We have, an schools. we have an exemption? Yeah, I think so. Isn't there, Tom, oh, Tom Huggison, isn't there a, uh, a small town exemption for FMLA? No. For medical leave well, that's not how we should that. that. We're not small enough because, we, because of the number of school employees. Oh, all right. So basically, the school part of the insurance went up for us about 52000 and our share for the town went down about 10,000. If we cut the number, how much do we say? Our share? Yep. What do you mean? In other words, if, if, you look at, if you look at these two, okay, the school side yeah. went up about, what, 52,000, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the town oh, yeah. side, our yeah. own employees, it went down 10. Right. Mm -hmm. So it net about 42,000. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, of the and plans budget, on the left side, you budget you? for two and you're going to be short four. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, Essentially. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise you dump something for the cash. I mean, yeah. well, what um, does individual mean or plus one? That's an individual plan or, or an employee plus one plan. And then there's the, the next one down is the family plan. What's a plus one plan? Just a couple. Just a couple. Just a couple. It can be a husband and wife. It can be a one mother and child. child. Yeah. One child, one child. <coughs> it's an employee plus an additional dependent. Because the price difference per person is mm -hmm. a lot between all of these various yeah. plans. Yes, they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts about how to make this more predictable long term? Like, I don't, I don't think anybody could have predicted right. that with the same number of employees, you get that kind of increase right. in the insurance takers. Mm -hmm. um, I know so, at like, least I, two I, I of them are because Mass Health is catching up and, and not allowing them. To, they took away their premium. So, some of it's Mass Health. They're trying to push people back. If you're working and making money, yes, they're trying to push, push yeah, you to right. get it through your sure. employer. Yeah, of yeah. course. You know, the, the state budget is about 42% goes to health care. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to reduce that. Mm -hmm. That's the way they're trying to do it. Okay. Okay. So the state's reducing it and we're picking it up. Yeah. <laughs> so let me see this. Uh, Why did the town go down? Why did town, we had we a retiree. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the same number. <laughs> Could have been a yeah, but see a difference. Years. See the difference in plan, Tom. Yeah. Went from two to one. Somebody moved down to the Medex plan, <laughs> yeah. and that's the real love. Yeah. You had an increase in the Medex yeah. and a decrease in the, uh, the plus one. Yeah. Actually, so you got the, the snapshot of data. That's really that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was well done. Welcome. So there's, there's something I've been working on, and um, you know, I, I wanted to let the school know about these figures, too, before they uh, go into their budget hearings so that they're aware of you know, what their employees are using. Mm -hmm. um, but something I've been working on is um, the employer shared responsibility part. So what I found out that uh, you know, now that we're starting to pay some fines, it's, it's starting to make sense that the IRS is quite far behind. So just recently I've gotten the 2016 and then a few months later the 2017 
figures for, the, for their finally getting to mm. reviewing stuff. And um, so we're sharing responsibility if an employee is eligible for insurance but doesn't take it, they take it from somewhere else, a federal plan or a state plan. Um, so we have to report this to the, to the IRS that we've offered health insurance but they didn't take it. So they're finding those employees and looking at um, their, either their annual salary or their pay rate and are they making enough money to say that we offer them affordable health insurance. So um, the least stringent way to look at this is by rate of pay, and I found that the, the rate of pay minimum to qualify as an affordable health care offer is, um, I forgot the exact number, but it's in the $14.70. And there's some of our instructional assistants that make less than that. So that opens us up to the possibility of, of having to pay that fine. Um, but also consider that if if we if they took our insurance, it would actually cost us more. Mm -hmm. So right, we yeah. pay about two hundred and eighty dollars a month for that fine. It varies year to year, um, and we would pay. Uh, I think it's around three hundred and eighty dollars or so if we mm -hmm. if we insured them, mm -hmm. or or more if they had a family plan. But they would That's have so much better insurance. Plan. They'd have better insurance. So anyway, so what I'm trying to get at is it's, a, it's this little balancing act of do we accept the fee as it is? There's not that many. Do we bring up our minimum pay raises to avoid this fee? Um, that's a consideration, too. It's, it was actually only, Phil and I were looking at it just the other day, it's only you know less than a dollar difference in the, in the pay rate that would mm -hmm. need to be brought to a level where we wouldn't be fined. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's figure out the best way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what if we just charge them that difference to get them to take the insurance? Well, we, sure. we, did, we just did agree on a, a new three-year contract with our IAs, um, and we did um, those that were below $15 an hour, even though uh, the, there is an exemption to schools and towns for the new minimum wage act requirements um, in the state, we did think uh, that it was still important to pay the minimum wage. Um, some of them just work so hard, really difficult jobs, being like one-on-one -on -one caretakers for, um, you know, uh, severely, for, for kids with real issues. Um, and, and making less than minimum wage is just not. Yeah. Um, but that's, that, so that's what, so I think we did, we did all, within this next three years, they're all going to be. A, above that. A, mm -hmm. Yeah, above that, not by much. But does the fine go away, though, now? <coughs> It will. If, if we offer affordable coverage, yes, we have what's called a safe harbor, and we can claim exemption from it. Yeah. Okay, any other questions for Jan? Janice? Okay. Janice, thank you. Thank you. You can call me Jan. <laughs> okay, next item is the select board budget. Okay. We increased the budget by $50 this year because of a dues increase. Oh, I think that's pretty right. much. Can we cut uh, that I, in half? I did not have that in there, but I will put it in. Oh, oh it is in there. It is in there. Right, sorry. I was looking at the one. <coughs> Any questions on the select board budget? Okay. We're good, guys. Yeah. Any questions? Pretty no. flat. Okay. No questions. Next item is audit. Tom, you want to tell us about audit? Yeah, I had uh, I had thought that um, it would be uh, a good idea to you know set up a uh, a town fund where we wouldn't where we would be able to ask for the same amount every year. And we would spend it when we need it because we have it only biennially. Uh, however, our town accountant says <laughs> that since we have been funding it uh, through our operating budget, that um, <clears throat> setting up now, setting up a special account was not appropriate. Um, so that, I. That have, logic makes no sense. Once you make a mistake, you're condemned to keep repeating that mistake over and over again because to correct it is not appropriate. That's what he's saying? 
He's saying it's bad practice to move something from the operating budget off the operating budget if it is actually part of your operating budget. And there, that, that makes a certain amount of sense. Uh, therefore, I'm asking for money. <laughs> okay. uh, and and this, is, this is what it's going to cost us this coming year. This is a contractual figure, so it's um, accurate and complete. Okay. Any questions on that? That's standard. We have to have we have to have a uh, an audit every couple of years. And it was one last year just to keep something in the loop. Yes. In the line. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Just to keep the account. Yeah. 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 Um, and it was, it was a good thing because we actually had to pay, um, we had to pay for a, the triennial school audit. I, I have a, a note to myself to, for in future years, uh, the next time that comes up. Uh, yeah. Okay, other okay. questions on audit? So 18, no. 18, 19 time, it's, it's, I'm looking at the right page, expended zero. Uh, the 18 figure is. Um, it says budgeted 13, expended zero. Oh, 19, budgeted 2150, expended zero. Yeah, it shouldn't say zero there. Um, we, we uh, one of those years, we had an audit. Um, I think it was. I see the budget of it, it was. Nineteen. I think it was for FY nineteen. Okay. So that was that. Um, plus the uh, the triennial. We, we we needed it to borrow for the for the fire engine. Yeah. Yeah. Th this year we didn't need it, which is why it was one for this year. Yeah. Previously we did. Um, and the year before that, we budgeted it because we thought we might be borrowing money. Once you borrow money, um, some banks, depending on where we get our money, require an annual audit. Uh, when we borrow for the highway garage, um, that, might, that might come into play unless we use only state notes. And I'm not sure what the state policy on that is. So in 2019, it was probably 21500 just what you have there for the budget because you would have known how much it was going to cost. Uh, I, <laughs> it, it was 15 plus 2,500, and that only made 17,500. No. So I'd have to go back to the expenses and, and, and see what that was. And again, uh, I don't have a lot of um, FY18 expenses. Because, but uh, Wait, We'll take a look at this yeah. again. All right, it's not, not a big deal. Anyway, that's... All right, next item is the, uh, the legal budget for this year. Um, 10,000, you know, we're, we're always somewhere between 10 and 12,000 for this, which, you know, and we're usually way under budget. Yeah, FY17 we came very close, so I didn't want to go under 10, but I figured I could take it down from 11. Okay, mm -hmm. questions on that? No? Good. Okay. Legal's good. Town administrator. <coughs> is the town in any legal BS right at the moment? No, I know. I think we're I think we're pretty good right now. I'm just going to be reading this for into the record. This is coming out of audio. Um, for the town administrative budget, uh, first a reminder that this account covers not only expenses for the town administrator and his assistant, but also general expenses for the town office, including office supplies, copier expenses, the town report, and other smaller items. I'll also note that the town administrator's contract is being renegotiated. This budget prevents, presents level funding for that position. Uh, the hourly increase for the town administrator's assistant includes a raise to $20 an hour and an increase of one hour per week as there is additional work to be done monitoring and advising the website and to spend more time assisting the town administrator with the budget process, including proof, proofing the, uh, the budgets to make sure they're, they're right, and human resources. 
this would then become a benefited position, which would increase employee retention and help the open position when it becomes available. So the fact that this got tabled in town meeting two weeks ago just had no candidate. We just, just ignore that, just put it in the budget as if it didn't happen. I'm sorry? What's that, Phil? Wasn't that the exact thing that got tabled in town meeting two weeks ago? Uh, yeah, there yeah. was something that, that was that was yeah. tabled, and I'm bringing it back as part of the well, table for the town meeting. I'm proposing it as part yeah, of the budget. It's going to be considered in the spring. Um, in addition, this line item now includes five thousand for the administrative ad assistant to boards and committees, consolidating her hours from individual committees. In this line item, this will allow for some flexibility in in which committee she's working how much for. Uh, should one committee need more attention in a given year? There is also an increase in her pay to allow 75 hours in fiscal year 2020 for the Cable Advisory Committee at their request. Uh, that position is also slated here to earn $20 an hour. Uh, the increase in mileage and dues and conferences is based on current year expenses which include human resources and other trainings for the assistant to the town administrator, uh, not just my, my training and mileage. So this, this includes 5,000 that <coughs> was never here, um, and additional money, uh, that includes additional money for additional work for the Cable Advisory Committee. You can see in the, uh, the footnotes how that, um, uh, the figures uh, broken down a little bit further in that. Okay, questions? Well, I would propose that you don't put money in here for the Cable Advisory Committee. Uh, um, I mean, for one thing, it wasn't supported in the special town meeting, but, but I think within a few months, this committee is going to become virtually dormant again. You, you, you okay. know, the, so, so you're retracting your request. Well, at this point, yeah. You know, okay. uh, uh, the, well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The 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 big That's thing fine. that we work on is the is is renewing the franchise agreement, and we're nearing the end of that. And and then, ten years from now, we'll, <laughs> we'll the committee will have ac activities to do again. And uh, we'll worry about it then. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, you know, I don't know what the FCC is going to be up to. Yeah, and, and that's and fine. I, I just want to, I want to be open to committees that think that they would function better if they had some administrative help. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want people getting on committees and finding that the administrative burden is enough for them to quit because we have a lot of trouble keeping people on uh, committees, some of them very important committees. So that's my support so, no, for the I, position I, in general. I, I see the, the incredible help that Alexis is, you know, for only a few hours a, a month, you, you know, on the Conservation Commission, and it is invaluable, and mm -hmm. even more invaluable on the planning board. Yeah. All right, questions? I think your assault on the votes of the town meeting from just a couple weeks ago is just remarkable. I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, you, you can see in the uh, extra sheet handed out the um, similar positions in neighboring towns, um, which uh, all except for uh, Conway have, have health benefits, even at uh, 20, 24, um, 25 hours. How, how does that work? If somebody works 21 hours a week, how, how, are the, how, how does that work? In terms of health benefits? In terms of, yeah, I understand they get like, you don't get a, like, if there's a holiday, they're going to get like 21 over 37 and a half times the holiday rate. Yeah, once you hit 20 hours, um, health care benefits are mandatory. So they're, they're full. Full benefits, as if somebody was yeah, a full time. Yeah, they're not prorated. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if there's, if that individual is working another part time job, some, I mean, does the IRS catch up with this? You know, if they 
declined a health plan somewhere but took it someplace else? I mean, I can't speak for the IRS. No. <laughs> okay. More is the bid. I'll just note, you know, once again, this is the, the weekly assault on the town's bargaining position with its unions as well. That we, we, we've, we've reached a, nego a negotiated compromise with our instructional assistants, um, whose salary is comparable to our town assistants, um, uh, for a three year contract with a 1%, 2%, 2% increase. And, uh, and your proposal to dramatically increase the town assistant salaries um, yeah, in one fell swoop in one year in amounts that are double digit percentages, um, you know, this is all known and seen and counted and uh, it's, if we had to do that to, if we had suddenly had to pay every IA that, that same salary increase, Bank, you know, you, you, yeah. <laughs> well, what are we talking about? They are very different positions. What, what's, yeah. what, what are we yeah. talking about in, when you look at it as a proportion of the whole budget, for example? It, we're talking about because, the oranges here. <clears throat> oh, okay, but I, I, I just think to digress for a minute. Um, It's it's a minuscule percentage as opposed as 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 counted against the two or three people in this town that are non-school employees that are, are looking to get big increases in assistant salary um, under Tom under Tom's proposals. The the but it is not insignificant if that were extrapolated to all of the school employees who are similarly situated who just agreed to one percent increases. I see. Um, so, that, uh, okay. so, so we're saying for three years. there should be pay equity between <laughs> these two groups. Uh, there should be pay universal similarity to some extent, and not one percent for some and twenty-five percent for others. I will, we, we can't speak for the school. Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, we can. We are here. <coughs> the the right. school is, seven, is, you, is two thirds of our budget. You, you, you've got to separate yourself from the select board and the school committee and, and try not to overlap too much. Okay. Be schizophrenic like the rest of the place. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda, the IT budget. And uh, Roy, feel feel free to, to chip in here as well. Oh, to defray costs? Um, this is, uh, you know, an increase, both subscriptions are going up, and um, we keep asking Roy to do more things for the town because now we have a real system that... Uh, but that hasn't gone up. Uh, <laughs> or, oh, because you have to add the... Um, if, yeah, well, if you add the um, maintenance and professional and technical expenses together, um, this year, okay. it's uh, you know twelve eight hundred fourteen six five one. and okay. you know going up to fourteen okay. six. Yeah, um, and and you are doing more work for right. the town. We are, we are being more demanding and uh, requiring. What happens just in a situation like this? As I eyeball the budget, stuff gets just stretched out. So if somebody wanted something this month. They might not get it till next month or the month after that. That's that's just the reality. Um, and the thing, you know, we, we try and or I try and make this as predictable as possible, but it's uh, it's not that predictable. Depends on depends on what's happening. Yeah. Um, depends yeah. on malware a lot these days. I, two things I wanted to say. One uh, relation to Jan, I, I've been in this business not a short time, and we've hit a trough where uh, for years costs were going down, down, down on a lot of things. And now they are really at this low level. Companies are either finding they have to merge or get out of business um, or, raise the, or raise their rates to, to keep up with things. And uh, so she's, even though, I mean, I'm skeptical, frankly, I didn't speak up to that again at that very low maintenance cost because 
That is a low maintenance cost. Maintenance is typically 15 or 20 percent of the cost of the software, and it's you know you don't know what that company is going to do in year four or whatever it is. Okay, um, so I'm just I'm saying this Office 365 is not going to go down in price. If anything, it'll stay where it is or it'll go up. Mm -hmm. um, and that one, this is the other thing that I wanted to say is that companies are finding. I'm talking software companies, people, that they're, they're devoting half their efforts these days on security. Sure. And that's yeah. up from single digits in not that many years ago. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of an unpleasant situation for a lot of us because we find ourselves just spending time and energy on stuff that it's, it's a sinkhole, basically. Yeah. And there is no there is no solution. There is the solution du jour, du, the solution of the day, and it's this: the bad guys are here, they catch up. We go, we make a little progress, and then the bad guys are there again. And this is just this is how it is. Um, so anyway, so some of this, so the the bulk of this increase was really anticipating more issues than we've than we've had. Is and. And, and for the demands, yes. There are free versions of Office. The, Do they not work in a office? In a Libre office? Yeah. They're not compatible. It's, I, I would love to see everybody use Libre office, but the second you give that to people and people send them documents and they, they can't format them properly and everything else. Now we depend uh, somewhat uh, related to your issues today. We depend on Microsoft for our email, and it's not cheap. You know, email is not cheap. It's not cheap really anywhere, and you kind of get what you pay for. And even with Microsoft, some people may think you're not getting what you pay for, but trust me, it's far worse elsewhere. <laughs> so, yeah. that's, that's, I mean, there's connectivity increases in here. Um, uh, for the town offices, as well as uh, actually all all three sites have, because we really the base level for Comcast, which is thirty slash five, that's thirty download or may, maybe up to forty now. They they monkey with the numbers a little bit, and the five upload. Um, it's certainly well, where whatever it is, people want more. That's. That's all I can tell you. I can't really meter it out. I can't do anything. It's just that over there in the uh, town offices, when uh, they've got a full complement of people working during the day, it's slow for them. And some of them have online things that they need to do. Um, others have whatever it is. And it's lost productivity, which really pales in comparison to the added cost. So, um, I was going to compare that 30 to 40 slash five figure to what we had previously with MBI, which was five slash five figure, and at a equal to or even greater cost in some cases. So um, Comcast is not cheap, um, you know, I, but uh, we still have to be, in my opinion, grateful we have them and not nobody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, considering what, what we have to do uh, IT-wise in our town and, and, and the services we get, this is not a big budget. Not a big budget. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on the IT budget? You should request the poor one. I did. Next one. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, no, the only question was just, so were you saying that you don't support what the, that, that you think that Jan Jan's idea to switch to Zobi, Zobi was a bad idea no, or a good No, 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 okay. no. It, what, what's really great about that is that they talk to each other. So otherwise, because I at first I was going to suggest, well, have you looked at QuickBooks? Everybody uses oh. QuickBooks, okay? I think QuickBooks. <laughs> okay. Well, so, it's glitchy. It's been so, glitchy from day one. Okay, so it's, believe me, it's, it's a headache. But just about all my customers have QuickBooks. Not that I gave them, but they, that's what they got over the years. So after every payroll period, one of them, they'd be doing you know they'd be doing two dozen manual entries into the ledger, or the accountant would be doing it, and it's you know if they talk to each other, you that 
Yeah, that, and, that's that's a big. That's yeah, that's us. Yes, yeah, big plus. Okay, good. All right. Next item is the cemetery commission budget. This is a new budget, so we have nothing to compare it to. Um, Zero would have been a better some training and supplies. Zero would have been been a better place to start, or two hundred or three hundred. And I know this is probably the amount of reimbursement that we authorized <laughs> right, wait, to one person you already. Us for money you to do but, but that's a, that that would, that's one off things. That's but to have that to have this is like this is the one department where um, you go somewhere you get reimbursed for mileage all the time. Uh, does that apply to everybody else? If they claim it, yeah. I mean, it it does have to do with what people have been. Uh, the select board gets mileage, don't they? No. If you want, oh. you could. If, if you yeah, wanted it, you could put it in your budget, and that would be. Yeah. You know. So this is the amount for that one person is claimed in one in one year. What about the other two or three or whoever? I don't. Know. Yeah, this is, this should be for the three people. All right. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Okay. Cemetery budget. All right. Um, Tom, other uh, fiscal 2021 budget business? We have uh, nothing right now. Okay. Uh, the assessors will be in uh, February 3rd, I believe. Uh, they wanted uh, a little That's more time to sort of find some of those Okay. Good. We'll see you next Monday. <clears throat> this coming Thursday, the, uh, the school budget will be presented to the uh, school committee. You know? Okay. Um, there's no cherry sheet numbers yet, so uh, the, the state has said they will be out by the end of January. All right. But um, so we, there, there are preliminary numbers that are uh, probably best not to look at because they're so optimistic and warm and fuzzy. Because with no state numbers, whatever. So uh, uh, typically, the cherry sheets uh, first come out when. Uh, on the day the governor presents his budget, and that's supposed to be tomorrow. So yep. it's Excuse conceivable me. that by Thursday there will be cherry sheet numbers. All right. I don't know whether they'll make it into the, uh, the budget by then or not. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Tom, we have any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? For me. Okay, do we have your update? Yes. Committee news. Uh, in writing my submission to the town report, I noted that there are uh, three, three, three committees which do not have sufficient membership to continue. The Housing Committee with no members, the Agricultural Commission with three out of five members but none willing to be chair and no farmers, and the Energy Committee with just two members. Uh, therefore, I'm planning to ask uh, before this board for the inclusion of articles on the annual town meeting warrant proposing that the town rescind the town meeting votes establishing the housing committee and agricultural committee and that the select board consider not reappointing the energy committee for FY 2021. Best case, that results in people standing up and saying, oh no, I'll be on that committee. Uh, but I have little hope of that. Uh, town Council is currently reviewing the proposed contract for the Planning Board for a Cell Tower Peer Review Consultant and the proposed bid documents for the Highway Maintenance Facility. So those two, okay. two uh, uh, that board and that committee are, are busy with legal matters. Uh, in department news, a couple of suggestions have been made for Brownfield's assessment, which in this case is for materials other than petroleum, though if they find petroleum, it'll count. Uh, they, they can uh, assess who made, it. Who made those suggestions? What, what, what Brownfield's assessment for the town garage? It's ledge in the agricultural field. What's, what, what's the, there's been in, in, an industrial past to that location? It's been a highway garage for many years, and the trucks have been parked outside. Um, so the question is, is there anything in the soil there? Oh, the current. 
Uh, yeah, the current, yeah, the current tenant. The, uh, the second suggestion is the former Sunset Garage. Uh, the owners of the former Sunset Garage are out of town, and unless the property is going to remain commercial, the assessment grant would not apply. For both properties, there is some risk to an assessment, as it may uncover contamination that would be required to be removed. This would include the town. Um, uh, I believe still the town should be accountable for its own property, so I do plan to request an assessment of the current town garage site. And why would, are we being encouraged to do that? What, what? No. Where's that? Don't do it. What, what? No, that's just my own proposal. All right, let's, let's, uh, I don't agree with that. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, we don't have any plans of selling let's it. Let's put that on the side for right okay. now. Uh, I, I sense a, a unity in the select well, board on that. Um, I'm just asking. I'm sorry, Bob. Uh, why, why are we doing it? That's all. To find out whether or not the town has contaminated property near the South River. Oh, we have no plans of selling it or anything, right? I mean, no, we're going to oh no. keep using oh, it for yeah, we're going to keep using another hundred years. I think. Yeah. yeah, I can't see us selling that property. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let's, let's <laughs> put that under further consideration. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's where the fuels dispense that. I mean, go ahead. Next one. Yes. Uh, we have received our quarterly report from the Franklin Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, which shows that Conway has completed work on nine units uh, in Conway as part of the most recent grant. Mm -hmm. uh, more than Leverett, Sunderland, or Deerfield, mm -hmm. the other towns participated in this regional grant. Uh, the FERCOG had applied for a Regional Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant. I mentioned this before. Unfortunately, one of the anticipated sources of funding the local match, a grant the Franklin Land Trust had applied for, was not funded. So Kimberly McPhee and I are trying to work to come up with a smaller program and alternate sources of funding. I've said that I could contribute some, but not all of the grant match account voted by town meeting. And the highway superintendent has agreed to a small amount out of his budget as one of the main items was culvert design. Regarding the chapter 61 parcel that was sold without going through the proper process, town council advises that since there is not a change in use and the buyer is willing to sign an affidavit to that effect, there is no need to go through the committee notification and approval process, which is really good news. It's a fairly did, did, involved did, process. Did we find out how it is that we weren't notified of that? No. Okay. That's kind of important. Yeah, that would be some real digging. Not necessarily. Maybe you know, just a phone call. Maybe it just a phone call. You don't know. All right. Concerns of the selectmen. Any concerns, Philip? I'm good. Okay. Robert, no. I'm good. Okay. Mail. Okay. Uh, as as Tom mentioned, we got got our uh, annual report from the uh, the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Does anyone want to take a look at this report? That's wonderful. Yes, we it, it, we did did well. They do send those quarterly if anybody ever gets interested in what's going on. And we got uh, two pieces of communication on the signs that have been put up, the bus stop, um, the school bus stop ahead signs right. on one sixteen. Okay, so you saw those? No, but could you, I would appreciate a synopsis of the yeah. of the comments on the new day glow yellow. Uh, gotta, have, gotta put sunglasses on as you pass it. Signs. Well, in fact, we have comments from the person who requested. One, one of the, you know, um, one of the, the people who, who requested this originally yes, yes. Um, gave us a little thank you note. Uh, we also got a note from the uh, Mass DOT, basically saying the signs have been put up, and uh, the note says thank you for taking my concerns for the Parsons Street bus stop and taking action with the new signs. I hope all that see them are aware Conway children will be safe. Even ones, uh, uh, even one prevented uh, accident will be worth, well worth it. I am grateful, many thanks. Okay. And that's from um, uh, Barbara Weir. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's, that's good. Her days of standing by the side <laughs> of the road with the hair dryer to pretend that it's a radar detector <laughs> yes. are, are over, I suppose. Well, little story, yeah, we're not going into too much detail. Little details. story. Yeah. That's one of our security measures. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, and, and we also got a, um, 
uh, a letter from one of our uh, residents who um, had an accident on Shelburne Falls Road and was very happy with our response and the EMTs and the police chief uh, and the and the uh, firemen who all came to uh, basically uh, see that she was okay and make sure that uh, she got the help she needed. So that was that was great. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's about the um, the uh, flying the uh, the uh, flag right. for uh, the Child Abuse Awareness Month. Right. Uh, that's just saying uh, thank you to the yes. select board, and uh, we do have to do some further consideration of that. Yep. Any announcements, Phil? Do you have any announcements? No. Okay. Bob, do you have any announcements? Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday the 27th uh, here at Town Hall at 4.30 p.m. so that we can uh, attend the meeting down in Sunderland with our, our local uh, legislative officials. Okay? So that's going to be a meeting that will be over by 5.30 and uh, we will be down uh, for that meeting at 6 o'clock at Sunderland. Do you know if our state senator will be represented at that meeting or is it just Joe? Uh, I, I don't know who's exactly going to be there, but that, it was just Joe Conifer and Natalie on the, yeah, on the I, invite list because so those other three towns and us have different senators. Yeah, so far. And okay. the only uh, budget we have up for consideration that evening is the Franklin County Technical School. Okay. It will be in. And their, their uh, preliminary budgets are often very, very close or the same as their final budget. But we do know that it's going up this year. We, we were warned last year that going from one or two students up to ten they were expecting this year. So our assessment for that should uh, go up uh, considerably. Okay. All right. And, and right now um, I'll take a motion to, uh, I'll make a motion to go into executive session for reason number two, to conduct contract negotiations with a non- Union personnel, uh, non union person, um, our town administrator. Uh, and we'll, we will um, adjourn from executive session. Roll call. Roll call. Phil. Phil? Yes. Yes. Robert? And me? Yes. Okay.